Bill Schoenberg, Fast Pitch Power. Today we're going to continue our series of establishing a throw zone, a runway if you will, that enables you to throw specific movement pitches. The way you establish your throw zone will give you the opportunity to follow a path with your hand that will enable you to have power and command with your movement pitches. We've done fastball and changeup, we've done screwball. I'm going to back up to the pitching rubber. I'm going to show you real quickly, just as a review, what those pitches look like, what the establishment of the runway is for those pitches. You'll notice that I have here a white PVC pipe, which hopefully I won't trip over, and that is my center line, my power line. And please remember, the terminology we, we use may not exactly be the terminology that you use. May be saying the same thing, but if you have any questions or any doubt as to what we're saying based on terminology, please reply, ask us, and we will tell you. Fastball. I come off the pitching rubber. This is the rudder that steers my ship, and I am directing my runway and my throw zone directly at my target. Here it is. When I deliver the ball and drive through, I'm going straight down that throw zone right at you. Good for a fastball and a changeup. For a screwball, similarly, the rudder that steers my ship is going to go slightly to the left, and now I have established a throw zone, a path between my dry foot toe, my right foot, and my left foot, that if I have my hand stay on it, will draw a picture of what a screwball looks like. So my hand will go from my dry foot toe to my stride foot toe and finish. And that is the path for an effective screwball. Add to that lower arm action, which creates spin, and it's the spin that makes the ball move, and you've got an effective movement. Curveball. When I come off the pitching rubber for my screwball, rudder that steers my ship, my glove hand is going slightly to the left of the power line, my stride foot is following, and my runway and throw zone is established on that basis. For a curveball, conversely, I am going to stride slightly to the right, and we're talking about a right-hand pitcher now, left-hand pitcher, you're reversing the directions. I am going to stride slightly to the right. My glove hand is going to take me there, and now I have created that path between my drive foot toe. If I draw a line, it's going to be sort of a banana hook from my dry foot toe to my stride foot heel as my elbow reaches the back of the throw zone. My forearm is lagged behind. My palm is up, fingers outside the ball. I can snap that pitch off, creating this kind of spin on the ball, three to nine o'clock, allowing the ball to break late and to command the strike zone with good movement. All I have done when I'm throwing that curveball, as far as establishing my runway is concerned, is creating a boundary with my body that enables me to follow a path. I'm not opening my shoulder. I'm using good front side resistance that enables me to fire that ball down the throw zone and create spin. I never want to utilize my shoulders. I never want to open that elect which takes my hand in a position that is dragging it across the pitching lane, and that is going to diminish your movement. You're going to get run, but you're not going to get break. So for the screwball and curveball, and the next time we will talk about drops and rises, it's very important to establish that throw zone so that you can develop consistency in your hand path when you're delivering those movement pitches. I look forward to talking to you next time. We always love to bring you the best information we possibly can to make you the best pitchers you can possibly be. Great to talk to you. Speak to you soon.